And this is Daybreak on CBC Radio 1. A new study says human-caused climate change made wildfires in B.C. worse, much worse. The study was done by climate scientists at the University of Victoria and Environment Canada. It found that the area burned in B.C. in 2017 was, get this, 7 to 11 times larger than would have been expected without human influences on climate. Francis Zwiers is one of the authors of the report. He's the head of the Pacific Climate Impacts Consortium. What we learned from those climate models is that um, if you compare the climate of this decade with the climate of the 1960s over British Columbia, that uh, an extreme hot summer like the one that we experienced in 2017 is probably about 20 times as likely now than than it was uh, during the, the decade of the 1960s. This is the first study of its kind for, for British Columbia, and, and, and I think it's important to be able to undertake these um, local and regional types of event attribution studies so that uh, you know, people living in, in individual regions begin to understand that climate change, which itself can be a you know, very abstract notion, is, is impacting their region, their air quality, um, the landscapes that they look at, and so on. And this is also the first study to directly link climate change to a particular fire season. That was Francis Zwier as a climate scientist. The study also says the effect will continue and maybe grow in the future. Glenn McGilvery is the managing director at the Institute for Catastrophic Loss Reduction. It's an independent nonprofit research group established by the insurance industry. And he's on the line with us this morning. Glenn McGilvery, good morning. Good morning. What do you make of the findings of this study? Well, uh, as noted, the, the study is unique in that it's an attribution study. It, it attributes climate change to a specific season. Uh, other than that, though, uh, no big surprises. I mean, we're, we're, we've been hearing many times over that uh, climate change is making wildfires worse, and we see it again in this report. Can you give us some examples from your own work uh, in other areas where you see climate change tied to specific events? Well, we haven't done attribution uh, science ourselves here at uh, ICLR. It's uh, it's an emerging field, uh, but we do know that uh, attribution research has been done uh, for Hurricane Harvey last year and has attributed uh, a great amount of the rainfall to climate change. Uh, we've looked at other hurricane. They have looked at other hurricane events and and uh, wildfire events, extreme rainfall, and that sort of thing. Heat as well. We can't do it for things like tornado or hail at this point, but we can for uh, extreme heat uh, and drought and uh, extreme rainfall and now wildfire. Hmm. And how are Canadian insurers responding to the increasing challenges of climate change-related events? Uh, uh, first of all, I mean, they're doing a lot of work via uh, the institute that, that I work for. Um, some of the big concerns are with uh, extreme rainfall because we're seeing uh, a lot of urban flooding across Canada. I'm reminded of Toronto in 2013 when we had a billion-dollar rainfall event. And the fire season, of course, uh, coming off of 2016, the largest uh, insured loss in Canadian history, the largest wildfire in Canadian history in Fort McMurray. That was uh, nearly $4 billion of insured damage, about $9 billion in total damage. Uh, so there's a lot of concern, and there's a lot of uh, research being done, uh, a lot of it uh, through ICR. What are, is the effect of the cost on people's insurance when we have more and more extreme weather events like this? Well, uh, I think uh, you know that's a question for, for somebody else. It's not something that we look at a lot at ICLR. Um, I think we should be very grateful that we have a reinsurance industry where insurance companies can spread risk uh, globally to uh, to the reinsurers. Reinsurers have uh, worked hard to keep our premium uh, at a reasonable level, um, but we aren't sure what the future holds. I mean, we're going to see uh, more uh, natural loss events, and we're going to see bigger loss events. So uh, the future is going to bring a whole different world. You look at catastrophic loss reduction. So what are the things that you'd like to see governments, residents uh, do to reduce the loss from wildfires, let's say? Well, uh, I think the primary uh, thing that needs to be done is we, we have to embrace FireSmart. So FireSmart is a, uh, uh, the best program in the country for mitigating the impacts of wildfire on communities. There are different aspects of FireSmart. 
So fire smart involves, among other things, uh, managing fuel uh, in forests so that uh, uh, when we do get a wildfire or if we get a wildfire, it's not as intense. Fire smart also uh, can be applied to individual properties to protect homes and, and other structures. And there are me- measures that can be taken to, to implement fire smart. So fire smart can be done on, a, on a, a big scale. It can be done on a neighborhood scale, and it can be done on a private property uh, scale. And I think both uh, all levels of government and private property owners have to embrace fire smart, uh, learn uh, what it takes to fire smart a property, and it's not usually all that hard or expensive. And they have to get to it. Um, we really know what needs to be done uh, to mitigate the impacts of wildfire. We just have to to do it. Does your institute take a position uh, on, because, th- you know, those are sort of the mitigation uh, side of the equation, but there's also, of course, the the global action that's needed to reduce climate change before it has, there's a runaway effect. Does your institute have a position on how to best do that? No, we are a disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation uh, institute. Uh, we don't do the greenhouse gas mitigation work or the carbon tax work, or anything of that nature. Uh, but certainly we have to, uh, we know that we have to reduce uh, emissions, and we have to uh, uh, embrace uh, renewable energy and things of that nature. But our work primarily concentrates on uh, reducing the impact of these events. And if you could give a grade to communities a- across Canada in terms of how they're doing with with mitigating the effects of climate change, how well are our local governments, for example, doing on, on that front? Mitigating the impacts of climate change, yeah. or, or or doing the uh, things that you've that. suggested, for example, fire smarting homes, uh, and, and preparing for natural disasters. Yeah, there are many uh, communities across the country that are doing work uh, to look at wildfire. There are some places that have initiated risk studies to uh, determine their exposure to wildfire. There are uh, communities that have uh, initiated studies to evaluate action plans and what can be done to reduce the impact. There are some that have uh, done a good job at reaching out to residents to conduct, you know, fire smart initiatives on private properties and um, organizing community events to undertake fire smart on a neighborhood level, that sort of thing. Um, the problem is there are thousands of at-risk communities across the country, and most of these communities are not doing anything, and um, and that uh, that's worrisome. Uh, We're going to see more fire in the future. We're going to see bigger fire in the future. And we're going to get to the point where we're not going to be able to address and fight each one. We're going to have to pick and choose. That's how bad it's going to get. And uh, we really have to get down to to the work that needs to be done. Again, we know it needs to be done. We just have to really do it. And uh, we have to get a bit more serious on, uh, on looking at the wildfire risk. Do we know, you know, for a dollar spent on prevention, do we know how much money that saves, that dollar will save in terms of costs of rebuilding? What's the return on the investment for, for this kind of work? Uh, nothing has been done in Canada on that, but there has been a great deal of work in the U.S. And actually there's a new study uh, which generally says that uh, for every dollar spent on mitigation, there's a $7 return. Um, I think our number would be similar to that in Canada. We would like to do that work. Uh, but it's very clear that the cost of, of inaction is much greater than the cost of action. Glenn, really interesting to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much for your time today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Glenn McGilvery is the Managing Director at the Institute for Catastrophic Loss Reduction. We reached him this morning in Toronto. We'd love to hear what you think of this.